what we're going to do now is, now let's go ahead and take a look at a vector. Now, this vector could be anywhere, right, on a plane. We don't have any kind of sort of axes or anything like that. This is just a vector on a plane, right? And for any vector on a plane, let's, um, let's pretend, though, now that we're going to be using them on the Cartesian coordinate system. So let's go ahead and put this vector on a Cartesian coordinate system. And what I want you guys to look at, you know, let's just look at uh, you know, your x's and your, you know, your y's. But if I was going to go and plot this on the Cartesian coordinate system, we know that each one of these coordinates, p, has two coordinate points, right? An x and a y. And we could say that q are going to have an x and a y as well, right? Yes? OK. Um, so but what we're going to be looking at now is let's go and call these points, let's call this point p1, comma, p2. And let's call these points q1, comma, q2. So the coordinates are going to be p1 and q and q and p1 and p2. All right. Now there's another set of vector that we're going to talk about. So so far we just talked about vectors that have been on a plane. Now a very very important vector to kind of go through. If you guys remember, remember when we're dealing with equations and we always kind of go back to oh what is that in standard form or what is it in this format, right? We like to have those formats because it kind of brings everything together that we can apply it across different you know different types of problems. If you know how to go, if you know how to put something in a certain form then you can be able to find what the slope was or what the intercepts were or something like that, right? With the equations, when we dealt with like standard form, slope intercept form, vertex form, right? We had all those different forms that we worked with. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we just have a vector that's on a plane. And we know that a vector has an initial point and a terminal point. So the next thing I want to work on is finding the component form of a vector. So if we're going to say the component form of a vector, we'll say vector v. The component form of a vector is going to look like this. Um, we'll just call this, well, vector v is going to be q1 minus p1 comma q2 minus p2. All right. And that's really all we're going to be looking at for this component form. So let's just go through a quick example. Let's just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So let's say this point is 4, 2. And this point is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so we'll have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 9. So if I wanted to find the component form of this vector v, I would do v equals q1 minus p1 comma q2, which is 9 minus 2. Therefore, the component form of my directional segment p to q, which we're calling vector v, is now going to be 6 comma 7. So let's go and draw this with component form, because I want to kind of get to why, why do we find component form and what is it helpful? Well, component form, if you notice, now we only have kind of two coordinates, right? So what does that represent? Does that represent the initial or the terminal side? Well, when dealing with component form, the reason why component form is helpful, component form is always going to have your initial point at 0, 0. So if you can now find your component form, which now has its initial point at 0, 0, to find my terminal point, I'm just going to go over 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, now, it's not the most perfect all right, um, vector, but do you guys see that those are kind of looks like they have similar, um, similar slopes and maybe similar magnitude? They're not perfect, I know, on my. Am I analysis, but you guys kind of see how all I did is I took this vector now and I just kind of re-represented it in its component form. All right? So it's something that's going to be similar, but you're just going to see the component form just allows us to use some very special, it allows us to be able to work with the vectors in a very standardized way. All right? So that's how you find the component form of your vector. So yeah, we have that one. OK. Huh? Yes.